This training is specifically about monthly subscription considerations for a pet business. What is it first? Well, a monthly subscription is really just a regular service that you're offering to a client uh, where you know there's scheduled monthly automated payments. What I want from you for you to get out of today's uh, training is to help you determine whether or not it's worth looking into deeper if you don't already have monthly subscription offers to consider some. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't do anything. There's lots of variables, but uh, I hope that by the end of this training, you'll be like, hmm, this is definitely something I want to look deeper into. Or you know what? Maybe a monthly subscription is not really super beneficial to my particular business. And we're, all right, so without further ado, I'm going to share my screen and we'll get down to it. All right, so what? It's a scheduled monthly automated payment is what a monthly subscription is, right? And there's lots of different examples of this. I'll go through some right now, depending on what part of the pet industry you're in. Uh, so one example can be, you know, doggy daycare, where a dog comes once or twice per week on the same day, uh, every single day, uh, or sorry, every week of the month. So that's a consistent kind of monthly subscription. It doesn't flip flop or, or bounce around. Uh, another example is same for dog walking. Hey, maybe Tuesdays at 1 PM is Samantha's dog walking spot on her monthly subscription. Uh, another example could be like food service delivery where, you know, it's pretty easy to predict how much food a dog eats every month. And on the second week of every Tuesday, Jimmy Dean gets delivered his bag of food or his raw or whatever the thing is. Uh, so it doesn't just have to be, uh, it can be a product, uh, but as well as can, it can be a service. Maybe a toy or treat box subscription is another example. Uh, for group dog classes, uh, dog sports are really good on a monthly subscription basis. Uh, you know, for say nose work, uh, hoopers, agility, dock diving, like fill in the blank. Um, there's another option for that virtual tra dog training library, um, subscription where they get charged a monthly fee to stay in the group and get access to all the trainings, uh, pet sitting visits can also fit into a membership, uh, option as far as let's say someone has a puppy and they work full time. Well, you could have a monthly subscription for a couple of months anyways, where you maybe go two or three times a week at the same time each day to, you know, uh, help the puppy, uh, go potty outside and get it, stretch its legs and so on. I'll give you a couple more examples and we'll move on. Uh, grooming, it could be, uh, you know, one to two regular appointments per month where you just automatically bill them. Um, there's so many different ways you can consider a subscription service. Uh, and I'll give some more insight as to the benefits of it. All right, so next is why. Why would you even want to consider a subscription service? Uh, in my experience, because it can offer some stability. Uh, it can also improve the use of your services, meaning people are using them more regularly. Uh, customer loyalty can increase. So like I'll give you an example. Let's pretend you go uh, bring your dog to a doggy daycare for uh, once per week on Mondays, subscription daycare. Well, a customer benefit that they might provide that facility is, say, uh, monthly uh, nail trims because they have the staff there anyways and they're trained appropriately that that can increase customer loyalty, but also the regularity of the dog coming every Monday, getting to see all of its regular friends really helps um, the people feel like it's a beneficial uh, service, but also you're going to naturally develop more rapport with these clients because you're seeing them regularly. So that increases loyalty. Uh, what it can also do is reduce administration uh, costs and time and all those kinds of things. I'll give you another example of how it can reduce admin. Well, instead of you having to charge people every single time they come in for a day of daycare, for example, uh, they would be automatically billed at the start or end of each month, depending on how you want to do things. Um, other ways that admin can be reduced for the doggy daycare example would be like, hey, last minute cancellations where people first thing in the morning be like, I'm out and they take their dog out of daycare and then you're scrambling around trying to fill out, uh, you know, five or 10 open slots, even though you were full uh, two days ago for this morning. Now you got to try to tell people that couldn't get in, hey, if you want, we had a couple slots available. That takes a lot of time for busy daycares. 
So that could be like a significant positive benefit of a monthly subscription because they would own that Monday slot, kind of like a child daycare. Anyways, I'll get into that further as I go. Um, there can be lots of reasons why you consider it. Those are some. Next piece is looking at, well, what are your actual goals yourself for considering offering a monthly subscription or membership service? Uh, membership subscription is kind of similar. It's just how you want to define those two words. So I'm just going to, for the sake of the argument, say subscription today. So one thing you want to ask yourself is what's my ultimate goal from this? Because knowing what your goal is will make it simpler to determine if a subscription might actually meet it or not. So maybe it's, you know, here's some examples, consistent work for staff. Maybe it can help uh, you schedule more appropriately, right? So once again, if I use that daycare example, hey, Mondays are super slow, typically, I'm just making this up, but let's pretend. Uh, and then about Wednesdays are super busy. So I have to maybe have two people on Wednesdays and only one on Mondays, but it varies week to week, depending on what people book, because I don't have any kind of regular process other than people just book in when they're going to go out of town, or be at work for overtime or whatever. So to prevent your staff from maybe getting frustrated if they get sent home early, uh, every second day, if enrollment's low, you can a lot more readily predict uh, how many staff you need on what days uh, when you have a subscription model. So that can be consistent work for staff in that example. Uh, clients you using services consistently, uh, same type of thing, right? If you, for instance, looked at, let's pretend you have punch passes. Maybe I'll preface this by apply the basic premise I'm talking about to your particular business and or subscription consideration. I'm just going to use dog daycare continually as an example, because it's just a simpler way to wrap your head around these premises, because I don't want to flip flop between 10 different potential subscription options. So clients using services consistently, let's pretend you had punch passes in your doggy daycare. Well, you can tell most softwares or, or uh, records, you can see, hey, these number of clients, let's say it's 10, 15, 50% of your clients are really sporadic with using their punch passes. They only use it occasionally here and there. Well, what if that percentage of clients I could get more regularly in? Uh, with the exact same number of clients, you might be in be able to increase, increase their frequency of visits by you know a significant amount. So you don't necessarily need a whole bunch more clients you just need some of your regulars or people who use punch passes, but don't go through them very quickly to book into more of a consistent slot. And I'll tell you how you can do that in the next example that makes sense for you and them. So it can increase the use of your services. Uh, so which obviously then the next piece is you can earn more income. If these people who use a 10 pass of uh, punch card for daycare, usually over three months, you know, well, that might only be, uh, what is that, you know, 3.3 per month, right? 10 passes. Um, they're doing it well, maybe once a week or so or less, right? Three times um, in a month. Well, if you get them on a monthly, by default, you're adding one extra day to it. Now, that's not the exact math. Uh, if it was over three months, basically, they would do four, one month and three and three. Well, if you had on, on a monthly, by default, that one particular client is coming in two extra times in that 90 days. Um, and obviously, if you times that by 10, that's a lot more uh, visits just from a simple shift of a tweak. Uh, better working environment. So once again, this can improve your working environment because your staff might feel more uh, relaxed because they're not like stressed out about, oh my gosh, are these, um, you know, three higher maintenance dogs all coming in on the same day and now I got to chase them around all day because in our doggy daycare you know some dogs are just easier to manage than others and if you know when which dogs are coming on which day and you have subscription options you can actually schedule those potentially higher maintenance dogs on different days so they're not all coming at the same time making the working environment a little bit more enjoyable uh, and also predictable uh, and potentially safer. Uh, last piece of it is a loss of income prevention. So what I mean by that, once again, with the daycare example, if you had a monthly subscription where Samantha comes every single Monday and drops her dog off, if she can't make one of the Mondays because she's sick, you don't have to pay for that. 
um, meaning you wouldn't lose income because they're paying for that particular slot in the same way that, uh, you know, people are already acclimated to pay for when it comes for childcare. So my son doesn't need childcare anymore because he's old enough. But when he was younger, I had to pay for a spot, uh, either a full-time or a part-time spot, whether my child was there or not, because they needed at the daycare, naturally, they had to buy food. They had to have enough staff to make sure they could accommodate whenever the ch children came. And it just became uh, part of it. All right, moving on. Uh, so I'll give you this specific example for doggy daycare uh, again. Okay, so it, it, it encourages regular attendance. So you might be wondering, well, how does it encourage regular attendance? Well, it depends on how you deploy it. So let's just pretend for an, a, a moment that you're intending to increase your prices for your daycare. Well, one way it can, can encourage regular attendance is like, hey, everyone, just as a heads up, uh, you know, prices are going up. Um, let's just say $7.50 per visit. So um, if someone wants to purchase a single day of daycare, uh, just as like in a drop-in, drop-in prices are increasing uh, by $7.50. And then 10 packs are increasing uh, by, let's say, $50. So it'd be $5 each, each time. $50. However, uh, monthly subscription price stays the same per day. So let's just pretend, you know, a regular uh, drop-in fee or a uh, 10 package is whatever, $40 per day, let's just say. Well, now they're going to have to pay $45 per day if they buy a 10 pack or $47.50 per day if they want to do drop-ins. So I'm charging them extra for the convenience of kind of coming and going whenever they want. And I incentivize them to, uh, you know, attend regularly on a specific day because they can actually not pay any more. So it's a really simple way where people are like, oh, I can save money if I just do the monthly subscription. And it's like, yeah, you can. But then you don't have to take a cut and pay for them being on this monthly subscription. Uh, one big thing to be mindful of is not every month has four weeks, some have five. So you don't want to just times uh, as far as when you're trying to calculate your monthly subscription fees and what they could be. I wouldn't just charge uh, times 40 times four because some weeks have five weeks, right? So that's just uh, an example of how it can encourage regular attendance, especially if it's associated around a price increase, because then everyone doesn't have to worry about, hey, you don't have to take the price increase, you can just do your monthly subscription. Uh, predictable play groups. Well, how does it encourage that? Because we book them. They're booked on the same day or days per week. Obviously, someone could do two or three days uh, per week for a monthly subscription or one, uh, but it predictable play groups makes things safer. How is that? Well, it's because they're scheduled on their, on their day. It's not just whatever day they want to come that week. Uh, premium fee on drop-ins and punch passes. How? Just like I said above, you charge for the convenience of them coming and going whenever they want. So you can increase revenue with the exact same amount of existing clients um, and encourage you know those to uh, jump on a monthly uh, subscription. Another two, a benefit I haven't talked about for the monthly subscription is some people are like to like pop in whenever they want. And they value that. And lots of times they're willing to pay extra for that. Um, some people will be kind of in between and then they'll try it. Now, what I've tell you, told you, what I can tell you is any facility that has uh, I've worked with directly to in, implement a daycare subscription, uh, the people, some people kind of are a little hesitant at first and then they do it and they love it. They're like, I know exactly what day my dog's coming. Everyone knows my dog. Uh, my dog gets to come see his friends and it's really a beneficial thing for all parties. Um, so anyways, how with the premiums? Well, you just charging more for punch packets, pass, passes and drop-ins. You don't have to necessarily stop having the ability for people to do drop-ins and people can still buy packages. There's just a bit of a premium on it and a, a regular, you know, similar price for monthly subscription. Uh, reduces, okay, so maybe I'll 
talk about this for a brief moment with um sorry i'm gonna bounce over here uh reducing last minute cancellations how well because all the people that are sub on subscription they own that spot so whether they show up or not they still own that spot and it's their choice if they chose not to attend for it so it's uh you don't lose any money on those what i would do is i would not encourage this in a facility that is not full uh so if you're like maybe over 60 percent regularly regular occupancy in your doggy daycare then you could start considering it if you're lower than that i would probably just stick um you know to punch passes and drop-ins for the time being while you're building up your clientele there's a whole bunch of reasons why i won't get into that you're obviously free to do as you wish uh, but anyways, so for instance, if I had, let's just pretend 80% of my slots on subscription, then, you know, people want those extra, say two or three spots per day for drop-ins and they'll book well in advance because it might fill out. Uh, and the people as well with the packages will. So then it really incentivizes people to either book in for, um, the subscription, especially if you have most of your slots available to, they go first to subscription people, then the clients really want to sign up for a subscription because they might not be able to get in if they don't have it. Uh, utilizes more staff effectively. How? Well, you can see on the docket, hey, we've got five dogs on, I'm just making a number up, on Monday, we've got 20 on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Uh, Tuesday has 15. Well, I'm going to schedule my staff appropriately um, whereas I have no room for drop-ins on those three days, but I do have room on the other two. So it allows you to utilize your staff a bit more effectively. In any event, uh, you know, a subscription model can be super beneficial for many businesses. It's not for every business. It really depends on what your goals and outcomes are uh, that you're looking for and what your problems are, right? But some of the real like top level benefits of it, in my experience, is just it gives you a bit of that stability and a cushion to be like, hey, I'm starting off or ending every single month with X amount of dollars from subscriptions. And it makes it a lot simpler to plan how you want to proceed with the following month. Or, uh, you know, it might just take the edge off of like running, chasing your tail, being like, I hope uh, we get enough income this month to cover all the bills, et cetera. So if you had any questions about any of this, uh, feel free to mention them in the comments or send me a direct message. Last thing I'll tell you is just comment on this post, me, if you'd like uh, me to help you make some projections and potentially a game plan on how a subscription offer may benefit your particular business and services. I hope you got some value from this. And if you did, feel free to comment, uh, you know, what your biggest takeaway was from it. And uh, look forward to sharing some insights in the future.